So now we're moving on to having a look at combinations of lin linearly independent random variables. And we're going to start this by having a recap of what you should have had a look at in AS. So we're going to start off by looking at, at expectation and variance and how these change if we uh, multiply by scalar or have to add on a value to either the expectation or the variance. So when we multiply or increase the value in a set of data through addition, we need to know how this is going to change the expected value and the variance. What I'm saying this is that it must happen to all the pieces of data in the same way. So all of the values must be multiplied or all increased by the same amount for this rule to work. So as you can see here, we've got a couple of formulas. You have to remember these. So the expectation, if we have, if we're starting off with just E of X, and then we change that to E of AX plus or minus B, then we can find the new expected value as that would be a e of x plus or minus b. And notice that if it's plus b here, then it would be plus b here. If it was minus b here, then it'd be minus b here. For the variance, if we start off with var of x and then instead we are having a look at var a of x plus or minus b, then this is going to change to a squared var of x. Now, the reason for this is that if you think about what the variance is, the variance is the standard deviation squared. The standard deviation is how spread out our data is. If we had a set of values and we added five to each of those values, then we would expect the data to move up by five. So the expected value should increase by five. However, the data is not becoming more spread out. So we would expect that to not change the standard deviation and therefore not change the variance. However, if we were to multiply the data points by a value, then we would expect the data to become more spread out. For instance, if I had one, four and nine, and I was times in each of those by two, then the data becomes two, eight and 18. And there is a bigger difference between two and 18 than there is between one and nine. So we would expect in the data then to have a larger standard deviation and therefore a larger variance. So as you can see here, var a of x plus or minus b would change to a squared var of x. So we're going to look at an example of this. So the amount of money earned in a car boot sale is thought to have an expected value of £300 and a variance of £40. So I'm going to call that E of X is £300 and VAR of X is £40. So then we have a car boot sale is held for charity and a rich businessman says that he will match whatever money the car boot raises and give an extra £100 as well. So whatever X is, this person is going to double it. So we would then have 2X, but they also say that we'll, they will give an extra £100 as well. So we're also going to be adding on £100. We're then asked, what is the expectation and the variance for the total amount of money raised by the charity car boot sale? So we're having to find the expectation of 2x plus 100. So from the previous page, we know that that means that we would have 2e of x plus 100. We know that e of x is 300, so that means that we would have 2 times 300 plus 100, which means that we would be expecting to raise 700 pounds. For the variance, again, thinking about what we've just been talking about, we're finding the variance of 2x plus 100. The plus 100 doesn't change anything, but we are going to have 2 squared var of x as our new variance, which means that we would have 4 times 40 
which means that we would have a variance of £160. I would now like you to pause the video and give the Now You Try question a try. So hopefully you've had time to pause the video and give the Now You Try question a go. So this time we have the heights of certain types of trees is thought to grow to a mean height of 2.3 metres with a standard deviation of 30 centimetres. So we have to be careful this time because we were given the standard deviation instead of the variance. The mean is just another word for the expected value. So our expected value is 2.3 metres. I also want my variance to be in metres as well. So I change the 30 centimetres into 0.3 metres. And because that was the standard deviation, I am then going to square this, which gives me a variance of 0.09. So then we are told to change from metres to inches, we need to multiply by roughly 39.4. Joe also believes that 4 inches were missed off each of the heights. Find the new expected and variance of the heights of the trees. So we're finding 39.4x plus 4. So when we do the expected, the expected value for 39.4x plus 4, that's the same as 39.4 times e of x, plus 4. We know that e of x is 2.3, which ends up giving us an expected value of 94.62 inches. For our variance, the variance of 39.4x plus 4 is the same as 39.4 squared var of x, which is the same as 39.4 squared times 0 0.09, which ends up giving us 139.7124. So it's quite important to note here that this only works if we are multiplying all of the values by the same amount. Next time, we are going to have a look at what we do if we have separate events and how we handle this instead of having the same event that we are then multiplying. Thank you very much for listening.